Assassin's Creed Revelations, the name obviously uh, came upon because we, we decided in, in this uh, uh, opus of the franchise to actually give the players uh, a lot of the answers that they've been sort of like uh, thirsting for ever since AC2. Like a lot of things were set up with Minerva, with Juno, uh, a lot of uh, uh, details about the uh, sort of the end of the world plot line uh, in uh, 2012. As we're getting closer and closer to, to the actual 2012 marker, uh, the franchise is also concluding, uh, you know, its its uh, you know major opus. So this uh, game is sort of like uh, where we're setting everything, all the records straight. We're sort of closing all of the loops that have been started, that have been sort of left in suspense, and we're going to reveal uh, not only a lot of stuff about the first civilization plotline, but we're actually going to conclude the Ezio, the Altair storylines. And we're going to sort of explain why, first of all, why Ezio is such an important character for the franchise, what his actual role is in all of that plotline, what uh, role Altair plays in that destiny, and ultimately what role Desmond plays in all that stuff. So we're sort of creating a, a, a nexus, if you will, in, in, in our game in uh, Revelations that will sort of align the destinies of all three major characters of the franchise and sort of like in one fell swoop we're going to sort of reveal a lot of the elements that surround that mystery. The way we've set up the naming convention is that uh, the number simply signifies the character. So Assassin's Creed 1 was about Altair, Assassin's Creed 2 and all the other uh, chapters are about Ezio, and Assassin's Creed 3 will be about another character. So because of the importance that Ezio takes in the whole like overarching storyline, uh, it was always a trilogy, right? So, uh, you know, uh, Ezio starts off as, a, uh, you know, just a character that's sort of brought into this uh, um, a world of the Assassins versus the Templars because of the death of his family, his father, his brother. So in Assassin's Creed 2, he becomes an assassin. In Brotherhood, he becomes sort of a master assassin, right? He, uh, now that, like, he has another personal vendetta. Now that he must avenge the death of his uncle. So through this entire game, he evolves into the master assassin that we have today. And in Revelations, Ezio becomes a mentor. So he becomes essentially the, sort of the highest ranking, uh, living assassin of the order. So this whole uh, character loop, if you will, you know, takes him from apprentice to master to mentor. And it's sort of this elegant loop that it's the cycle of the assassin, right? And by ending on this note, we reveal everything that has to do with the character. Uh, we sort of put uh, Altair's life into perspective, and we sort of set the floor for next assassin, who will, be, who will eventually like uh, sort of start the cycle anew. Assassin's Creed uh, has a, a tremendous legacy, like, uh, you know, past games. We, we've been just building on top of existing systems, and the game is becoming completely, it's becoming huge on the horizontal, right? So one of the things that we're really focusing on for this game is I thought that we, we, um, we need to start taking all of those different features and creating more links between them. Uh, we want to really continue evolving in terms of like new features, but finding uh, really innovative ways of combining them in a way to create a more concise core experience, uh, a stronger sort of core experience. So that's one of the things that I'm really exploring with this game is how to take all of those existing rich systems, combine them into like creating more links to allow you to take more advantage of the game. Second of all, uh, I think we uh, there's definitely uh, uh, quite an improvement that we can do on realization and on actual storytelling within the game. Uh, storytelling is always a bit difficult in open world games. You know, how do we dictate what the player does while you know giving him the freedom to explore the world and all these you know fun systems that we have? So one of the challenges that we sort of set to to resolve is how to deliver a more intense, cinematic, realized experience. Uh, while still exploring all the richness of the open world setting, all of those sy systems, all that stuff. So, uh, plus we decided to also challenge uh, what had been established in terms of like uh, uh, purely quality of characters, quality of animation, of performance. We really want to, you know, uh, have uh, revelations just be a, a huge upgrade on the uh, on the delivery in terms of realization and intensity. As a game becomes bigger uh, and players get more involved in the game. Players um, want to have a sense that they're progressing, that um, you know they're actually evolving and that they're gaining something as they progress through the game.
you can obviously do that narratively. You know, like your character can evolve and, you know, like the story can, can take the character to new places where you can actually feel that there's a growth there, right? But if you do that only on the narrative side without actually having any impact on the gameplay side, it feels a little shallow, a little empty. So what we do is we, we actually create all of these things so that you can get a sense of progression through the game, right? Getting a new armor, a stronger armor, will actually keep you interested in the game because you feel that you've, you've earned something and you're actually now using this new element uh, directly in the game, right? Uh, you know, narrative is something that is really cool to have and you should feel a progression, but if that isn't equaled by actually something that means something to the actual uh, action of playing, then it's just a story layer. It's not what I was explaining a bit earlier when narrative and gameplay need to be sort of embricked into like one sim one strong element. This is a perfect example. Like if you want to explain to the player that, you know, like his character has, you know, has become stronger or wiser and you uh, you explain it in the story, why not give him some special weapon that actually makes that more real and actually gives that meaning to the gameplay, right? Uh, in terms of, uh, of systemic elements that we've added, I'm really uh, anxious to see how people, uh, you know, react to the, uh, the Assassin's Dens. I'm really uh, uh, excited about having people actually play the maps with the hook blade, see how navigation patterns change in the game, to see how people uh, will uh, have fun creating, crafting uh, bombs and using them, and how, how much they will use them to, uh, to manipulate the game to their own playstyle. That to me is uh, like we've started doing some playtests, and it's really interesting to me to see how each individual approaches that differently. I can't wait to see what the actual vibe is from uh, uh, you know the, the from, from the community. Uh, I'm, I also can't wait to actually see the implementation of our our new like uh, realization style, like um, our new uh, you know like uh, character performances, our new like camera work, our new like. Uh, linear, uh, uh, you know, holly wow gameplay moments. You know, right now, there's still, we do have benchmark tests, but uh, I haven't yet seen the final product, and I just, I can't wait to see what it, uh, what it actually looks and feels like when playing the final product.